Hello and welcome to the Space News Commercial Space Transformers series, where we aim to give you behind the scenes look at the people and companies driving the space industry's commercial transformation. I'm Jason Rainbow, senior staff writer at Space News, and today I'll be talking to Chanel Milani, a managing partner at private equity firm Advent International. Advent made its biggest splash in the space industry last year with a $6.5 billion acquisition of satellite maker Maxar Technologies, which also operates a fleet of high-resolution imaging spacecraft. Advent has only been investing in the space industry for about five or six years, but it's keen for more opportunities in a market where private equity firms are increasingly responsible for some of the largest acquisitions. Well, Chanel, thank you for joining me today to talk about the space industry. We've got a lot to get through in such a short period of time. Are, are you ready? Yes, thank you for having me, Jace. Pleasure. So I'm talking to you today because private equity firms like Advent International are increasingly responsible for some of the largest transactions in the space industry. How do you see the sector evolving, including the role institutional investors like Advent will play in the future? Yeah, I think I think the space sector has significantly evolved in the last um, seven or eight years, because for decades, the space sector was always something that was funded by taxpayer money, right? It was always mm -hmm. publicly funded. Mm -hmm. uh, it always was notorious for being uh, extremely expensive and extremely slow <laughs> and, and always being over budget and running very, very late. Uh, and delays were always recorded, not in days or weeks, but in years, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that um, one of the biggest shifts has been uh, thanks, frankly, to um, uh, Elon and SpaceX, where they have significantly lowered the cost of launch, which was one of the biggest hurdles of what made space, space very expensive, uh, risky, because things wouldn't get up there uh, consistently uh, and would take a very long time. And I think with specifically Falcon 9 coming through and being consistent, regular, uh, with, a, with a great record of getting things up there. I think they had 344 launches consecutively before some number like that, before there was, um, there was an issue and then they've continued well ever since again. Uh, it's completely changed the game. And, and suddenly you don't need government subsidies. You don't need to have public taxpayer money. And suddenly the commercial economics work, which is what has led a lot more uh, normal commercial co companies to competitively enter and see if they can offer various services, um, which, which has come at the same time as the technology and evolution of how do we make things smaller, more radiation hardened, uh, and, and, and more sort of workable in space has all come together. And, mm -hmm. and that's what's created, I would say, a more commercial uh, environment for space today. Right. So what separates Advent and its approach to space investments from some of the other private equity firms also now looking at this industry? Well, look, I think our approach uh, has been uh, quite simple, right, which is that we have uh, we have within space uh, really focused a bit on the national security side of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think in our minds, uh, space has, is, is very much, a you know, it's, it's cliched, but the new frontier of where there is now a race, a race to put different technologies up there uh, in order to do a couple of things, right? I think the first one is really uh, uh, defense, which is how do we defend all the assets that are up there and how do we defend assets that are on the ground by, by in, from this environment, right? And the second is uh, how do we actually use the benefit of uh, being up there in space to do things better on the ground, to make things safer on the ground. Um, and that's a little bit where we've been focusing our energy, uh, which is around emerging technologies and strategic technologies, frankly, not just emerging, but what would be strategic towards national security defense uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in the scheme of things. And we've been, I guess, um, quite front-footed on, on making certain technology bets and taking certain risks and saying we will back ourselves and on certain technologies because we do believe they will they will develop they will be important in the future. Mm. Right, and your uh, six and a half billion dollar acquisition of Maxi Technologies is one of your one of your most high profile um, space investments. What attracted you to that company, and what's the growth story there? 
Yeah, I think it's quite simple, right? So Max, our phenomenal business, effectively um, owns and operates a constellation of satellites that are Earth observation satellites. So they, they're effectively able to take imagery um, looking down on the Earth uh, and, and looking around. I think um, for us, what was really interesting was this had, this was a fundamentally crucial business to intelligence agencies around the world in making sure that the right things were being tracked, protected and looked at, uh, which just created a level of transparency, awareness that, that was very important for national security around the world. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting for us from a deal standpoint related to the point about strategic technologies is we realized that Maxa was still fundamentally a picture taker, right? And there was a, a lot more to be done in terms of going from a picture taken to intelligence provided. Mm. And, and we felt that you know, we could invest heavily within Maxa uh, around the engineering side of it to with AI, with ML, uh, with data analytics in order to create more insights from the pictures, right? So it wasn't a, here's a picture, go figure out what it tells you or what you want to do with it next, but rather, why don't we solve a problem? And so we can take, we can take a number of pictures, decide where to take the pictures, how to take them, what to do with them, and what, what, is, what is it really telling us? And answer questions with insights rather than with a bit of a DIY, uh, for for the customer, and that's what we got most excited about with the Maxar investment. Right. Yeah. Of course, new technologies are rapidly disrupting the traditional space industry. It's fun to write about, but how does Advent evaluate the potential impact of these disruptions on its existing investments, like Maxar? And on the flip side, what other emerging technologies are you most excited about to maybe get involved in later? Yeah, I think, look, it, it, it's, you're raising a very good point, because given how fast the sector is moving, there is always going to be disruption, right? And, and the disruption is across various fronts. It's things are getting smaller, things are getting more proliferated, uh, things have to be more uh, hardened, because, you know, things can be then uh, uh, potentially uh, be can become vulnerable. Um, uh, everything is moving at a very, very fast pace, both the hardware, but most importantly, the software and what these things are capable of doing. And I think um, it's, a, it's an important topic for us when we make our investments, which is to sort of look ahead and see where is the sector going, what else could come up and where do we go? Uh, you try obviously to, to see as far ahead as you can to make sure that you know, we're, we're not caught off guard, but, but we know that sometimes you can get caught God. And so our approach a little bit is with, with these investments in sectors like space, which are constantly, uh, you know, uh, moving, shaping and innovating, is that we need to innovate as well. So we dedicate a fair bit of our, um, of our uh, earnings towards R&D and innovation. And so we have something like 300 engineers uh, that are constantly working on future technologies because we want to be the ones disrupting rather than finding out that we've been disrupted. Right, and that's at Maxar, sorry, to be clear. To be clear. Yes. Okay, and as commercial activities in space expand, uh, infrastructure such as um, satellite servicing, space stations, and lunar bases will become increasingly important. How is Advent at the private equity level um, positioning itself in this evolving landscape, um, and what opportunities do you maybe see emerging there? So look, from the Advent perspective, we try and stay a bit away from taking on these big infrastructure projects, right? That's a slightly different game. I think uh, what we're good at and what we are focused on is, is technology. So if we can, if what we are trying to do is come up with new innovative ways of solving problems, and, and they may go into large infrastructure projects, but we try and sort of stay at the, uh, at the component system, subsystem level uh, of providing these innovations. We like to invest where we have small critical components rather than in large project management things because the risk return profile, the margins on those are completely different from what suits our investment needs.
What really struck me when I came to this event was the energy that was in that room when we first got here and the engagement that was across the room, a diverse set of companies that are here today and capabilities that we're all bringing to the market. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay, um, ESG or environmental, social and governance metrics are also becoming increasingly important in investment decisions across all industries. Does Advent integrate ESG considerations into its uh, investment decisions in the space sector? And if so, how and why? And, and what future trends do you see in this area? Yes. No, look, environment is important, right? I think um, mainly we space lends itself very well to the E in the ESG. Mm -hmm. and, and it really does it in two ways. So the first thing is um, we can use our capabilities from space to help the environment. So Maxar is a perfect example. We spend uh, a lot, a, what a big customer set for us is environmental in the sense that we can look at, um, at, at certain you know, catastrophes. We can look at uh, uh, changes in what's happened. If there's been a flood or a hurricane, we can do before and after imagery. We can identify where the problem areas are, we can direct uh, crisis services and things of that nature. We can also look at climate change impacts of tracking over time, over years. We have a database, we can look at recent imagery, we can track rainforests, see what's happening there. We have methane identification capabilities from those satellites in space. So there's, a, there's an entire sort of um, a product offering around uh, doing what's right you know, environmentally. I think the other aspect of what we do is with our satellites, because people say, look, these satellites are out there, and aren't you just going to be debris one day? And I think uh, actually, importantly, uh, what we do is we ensure that there is sufficient um, fuel on our satellites that at the end of life, there is always enough to sort of put that satellite into a bit of a correct dive so that it burns up mm. and doesn't, doesn't turn into debris uh, and doesn't sort of sit out there floating around uh, as, as dead weight, right? So we, we do take that responsibility that at the end of life, these satellites are sort of uh, brought down and they, and they completely burn up um, so they don't create more rubbish. So I think those are a couple of aspects that we certainly were front of mind uh, when we were doing, making the investment. Very good. Yeah, and, and then perhaps also from an uh, investment perspective, what are some of the geographical differences in attitudes towards ESG and, and how do you navigate that? Because it seems to play a bigger role in Europe than US, for instance. Um, I, I'm not sure I see a material difference. I, I think everything goes a bit in waves sometimes and some people, you know, uh, it, it, how they define and how they think about ESG can, can be a little bit more or less left or right. But I think generally speaking, uh, at least my impression has been that we've got a fairly consistent um, view that we need to think about ESG in what we do. And I think I've seen, I see that with our businesses in America and I see that with our businesses in Europe. Um, I think we, are, we actively manage our portfolio so that there is an ESG plan with each of our portfolio companies. And that's true in both regions. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Uh, to end then, um, despite booming commercial space activity, partnerships with government agencies like NASA and the European Space Agency still play an important role in the industry. How does Advent help its space companies navigate and leverage these relationships? And what trends do you see in public-private partnerships in general? Because we hear from governments all the time how increasingly important sovereign space capabilities are, is that translating to even more deal making uh, on your side? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that we uh, think too, too much about these public bodies, to be frank, right? I think the way we approach things is we, at the end of the day, like to run commercial businesses mm -hmm. that are competitive, that, uh, you know, that are free to operate in a, um, you know, in a completely, um, uh, call it competitive environment. And as part of that, uh, we're not looking for any favors from, um, you know, public bodies. Um, and I think we, we want it to be free, free competition, right? And, and because that brings out actually uh, the best, right? It brings out the best in innovation. 
It brings out the best in, in, in cost management. Uh, and, and I think that's what you really want. I, I don't think you want, uh, once, once you've got a sector up and running, which I think space sector is up and running, uh, I think the less interference you have from public bodies, uh, the better, because that's going to really uh, encourage a long lasting, healthy, uh, competitive sector. That's great. Chanel, thank you so much for your time today. That was very fascinating. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jason.